the mystery about when the car disappeared will never be resolved. So in August 2020, taking it back just over two years, I get a phone call from Lamborghini Club member, I'm the membership secretary, a friend of mine, but also petrol hedonism supporter, Alistair. I can tell from his voice on that call that something really bad has happened and I can hear his voice quivering, but literally the words, my Lamborghini Diablo six litre VT has been stolen resonated in that phone call. I was blown away and my immediate instinct was, how can I help you, Alistair? What can I do through my contacts with the club, through my social media, through Petrol Hellenism members, anybody or contacts in Italy, what can I do to help you? So he told me what had happened. Effectively, he put his car in storage. Through a local dealer, he'd met a collector and this collector had space for his own cars, but also space for Alistair's Lamborghini Diablo. Now this Diablo was extremely famous. The number plate was Y3LOW, which is how we formulate the plates in the UK. It says yellow, and it's a stunning yellow Diablo 6 litre VT. And we know there's not many of these in the world, so it just makes it that little bit more extra special. But the car's famous because it's featured in Octane magazine, and it's in there, and it's in there like top 100 supercars of all time and this car's featured it driven by Chris Harris for that photo shoot but also we held it very close to our heart in the club because Alistair would drive his Mercilago Roadster and his Diablo VT to car shows and share his passion and his cars with fans. So 2019 was the last time we saw the car at a show and because Alistair works abroad he put the car in storage with this friend that he'd met through the local dealer because the way the barns were set up at this person's house, Alistair was absolutely fine with leaving the key with him because he may need to move it to get one of his other cars out. And this collector had Ferraris, Lamborghinis and Bentleys as well. 2020 rolls in and the world gets locked down. We can't drive anywhere. There's no point Alistair going to get the car out of storage and he's not driven any of his two Lamborghinis or any of the other cars because we're not going anywhere in the UK. He doesn't get around to going to pick his car up until August 2020. But before that, he gets a message from DVLA, the driving vehicle licensing agency in the UK. And the message says that somebody's tried to register his Lamborghini in their name. And he didn't think much of it. He thought it was one of these false texts or messages that you received. And so he phoned up and arranged to go collect his car. When he got there, the owner of the property met him and said, hold on a minute, I thought you'd collected your car. He goes, what do you mean? It's here. I've, you've got the key and the car's in the barn, the cover over it and plugged into trickle charger as I left it 2019. He goes, no, you must have collected it because it's not here now. So it's all a bit strange and it still doesn't make sense to me or Alistair right now, but the police were called straight away to the property to start investigating what had happened. Now, from an insurance point of view, it's very important to say at this stage, because Alistair had handed the key to where it was being stored, the insurance refused to pay out and want, wouldn't look into it any further. So that's the first kick in the teeth for Alistair. Because of that, I understand what he's been through since that time. The mystery about when the car disappeared will never be resolved, because as far as the owner of the property was concerned, at some point, Alistair had collected it, He'd gone into his garage and the Diablo was no longer there. So we don't know at what point in 2020, from when lockdown occurred to August, when the car disappeared. The first Alistair knew of it was this message he'd received, which he didn't think too much of, but then he went to collect the car and the car wasn't there, which made the message that he'd received actual reality and from the DVLA. So the whole police investigation occurs and I'm on the phone with Alistair regularly every day talking through to him, speaking to our club chairman, Alan, as well as others that own VTs in the UK. But most importantly, I'm putting it out across social media with pictures of Alistair's car because so many people recognise it. If you've seen this car anywhere, this is the number plate, please get in touch. 
anything you can do to help us with the police investigation. I get a message from a random account on Instagram. It's a DM. The guy's talking to me. He says he's seen the car. There is no way from this person's username to anything he posts that you can actually figure out who this person is or where he is. But he's telling me he's got visuals on the car. He knows where it is and pretty much telling us it's going to be shipped out of the country any moment now. I'm calling fraud. I'm calling rubbish. I'm calling he's just basically bored and trying to like add fuel to the fire, etc. And Alistair's happy to give him a reward. If he can give us any information, he's going to get £5,000. And this guy bites and says, that's cool. I can send you a picture. I know exactly where it is. I'll send you a picture as proof of life. And then other information will come. And we get a video of the car in a unit, completely whole, with a G-Wagon and photos from the front and the back. And it is the car and it's being held somewhere. But the next step is I pass the information to the police because they can obviously have their powers, look into the social media, try track this person down to get closer to where the car is. This guy at this point gets spooked as well because he's like, the people that have sold his car are part of a massive gang ring. And if it gets out there, I took pictures or anything, then I'm done for. And then I start getting spooked thinking, hold up, he's messaging me. And this is all getting a bit crazy because I don't want to be involved in any kind of gangs or anything that's going on in the underworld scene in the UK because of what I do and who I am. And I've got a lovely family. So we pass it all over to the police. Then somehow the police kind of think I'm involved and I become a suspect. And so after a couple of really frustrating conversations with the police where I'm trying to help Alistair, I kind of get to the point where I tell the detective to get stuffed because I'm just trying to do my utmost to help and get as much information. I think this is a really hot lead. We've got you something solid and you should work on this. Apparently the police can't do anything but have to wait for Instagram to take a 90 day process to get back to them on who may own an account and found out later on that that was addressed somewhere else and it kind of fizzled out into a nothing link. However, the DVLA had this request for the car to be registered to somebody. So there was a trail. This led to an address which had multiple names attached to it. From here, what they found was that that person who lived at that address, the main person, had had a redirect on his mailbox. So anything from the Royal Mail sent to that home was redirected to another address. So then they followed the trail to that address. And on that house, there was a redirect. Literally, the police could not get anywhere with that DVLA information of that first primary address because it went to a name that was named at this address, but redirected to another address and to another address. And there was always multiple people attached to these addresses. So lends into the whole chrome gang ring that obviously is permutated to deal with this sort of thing. I have to admit, I didn't really hear from Alistair much more after October 2020 and I didn't really think much more of it because the car's gone. We kind of had this footage, it was where the guy had said it was and it was going to be shipped abroad and that's exactly what we expected. 2021 happened, 2022 happened and on the 29th of December 2022, completely out of the blue, over two years after we found out this car had gone missing, I get a phone call from Alistair. I look at my phone, I think, I haven't spoken to him for so long. What? And I answered immediately, Alistair, hi. The excitement in his voice was palpable. Chiro, they found my Diablo. And I was like, sorry, hold on a moment, let me leave the room because we're sitting with family. Sorry, but say that again, they found my car. His car was stolen in Leicester, which is just up on the M1 north of London, about two hours north of London. They had found his car in Yeovil, Somerset, which is about three and a half hours, four hours south of there, in a disused outdoor car park, dumped in the corner, covered in black film, black cling film, black, black kind of film. And he just kept, he told me about this. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, how, what state's it in? He goes, oh, it's in a bit of a state. I haven't seen it yet, but they found my car. 
I was like, this is crazy. We'll arrange to come and see you next week. Can we get to see the car? Yeah, no problem. He said that the police guys that found it literally were looking for something else in this disused car park. And they come across this car. Everybody would assume it was a kit car of some sort. But when they stripped the black film back, they got to this VIN number, they ran it through their systems, and it had a direct hit match with the investigation from Leicestershire Police. So really exciting. I found a car. He's told me there's bits missing. It doesn't look great. But we have found a car. This reopens and reignites everything. And it, more importantly for me, I could hear the excitement back in Alistair's voice we arranged to go down to see him and go see the car in the in the com police compound and we went to film a police appeal for our own channel it's missing the front bumper as you can see in the photos and images here it's missing the bonnet it's missing the boot and it's missing the spoiler it's missing the doors and the wheels however the engine is in the car the full interior including Alistair's CDs are in the car. I did question him why he would ever need CDs with that V12 Symphony behind him, and he did admit that he doesn't get to listen to them too often. But still, it's mind-blowing that the interior is intact, and the engine, big ticket item, if you steal something like that, is still there. Our appeal to the petrol head community around the world is to help us find these parts. The Diablo 6-liter VT part can only really fit another VT 6 liter. They are slightly wider, their shapes are slightly different, the chassis was amended between the different models, therefore they can't fit another Diablo or regular Diablo. They have to be destined for another 6 liter VT. Are these parts still in the UK, stored somewhere? Are they now on another car or being used on some replica somewhere? Our appeal to you, and hit us up in the comments or in the blog just below here, there's going to be an email address for the Somerset Police. Let us know if you know of any parts that have come your way or you've seen them or have heard of them. We need to locate these parts for Alistair. We want to build this car back for Alistair and bring it back to its former glory. This 6 litre VT has to ride again. Also, if you don't know of these parts, we're going to be looking to rebuild the car anyway. So we need to buy the parts to build the car. So bring yellow back. And please, if you have any information, get in touch. We really need to do this for another fellow petrol head. No one should do a private party car deal without Caramel. During a car transaction, you've got a car, a title, and some money that's going to be changing hands. And I always tell everybody that neither side gets to have all three. But Caramel solves all of that because they verify the identities of both parties. They safely and securely connect to each side's bank account to manage the transfer of money, and they process your title and do all the DMV paperwork no matter what state the buyer or the seller are in. And for a limited time, Caramel is free to both buyers and sellers. They do allow you to add transportation and warranty products and things like that as you close your deal. So check them out now at drivecaramel.com or at the link in the description below.